Good evening, everyone. My name is Chris Cooper, known as the Channel Guy Trader, and I'm reporting to you live from Wall Street Trading's Miami office down in sunny South Florida. Today's date is Thursday, May 16th, 2013, and here is today's After the Bell Market Summary brought to you by WallStreetTrading.com. I have a great video put together for you guys here, so make sure you tune into the full video and one more thing here, if you have not been to the website yet, WallStreetTrading.com, we have a lot of great education information for you on the website, and you can also sign up for the 14-day free trial to our My Wall Street TV live intraday trading room on the via using the form on the right-hand side of the home page. Just put your information in, and you will get the credentials emailed to you in a matter of a minute or so. So let's go ahead and get into this video here. Again, I got a great video for you guys, so let's go ahead and get into it here. The Dow Jones was down a, a little bit over... Uh, Dow Jones was down 42 and a half points. The Nasdaq was down 6.38. The S&P 500 was down 8.31. Uh, the weakest index out of these three was the uh, S&P 500, down half a percent. If we take a look at the breadth on the market, we had 3,785 issues declining on the NYC, Nasdaq, and the AMX. We had 2,309 issues advancing on the NYC, Nasdaq, and the AMX. So therefore, breadth was in favor of the bears today but most of that selling pressure came in in the last um, two hours of the day as around two o'clock we had one of the guys from the fed come out and say that the fed may uh, pull back their 85 billion bond buyback program by the summer because they're they are seeing signs of strength in the economy so therefore they want to pull back on some of the stimulus that they've been using to prop up these uh, markets <laughs> i want to say something else but i'm not but to prop up these markets so Again, I got a good video here for you guys, so let's go ahead and get into some of these charts that I want to show you guys. Uh, starting off with the S&P 500. Okay, if you guys recalled about three weeks ago when we had that news come out, I talked about the uh, ES forming a nice little wedge inside of our channel system, inside of my channel system, and that took place right here off of this extension low that we had right here. All right, so we had that nice little squeeze pattern, and then that Friday we had the good uh, employment numbers come out, and that caused a nice breakout that we are finally starting to see some pullback action off of today's highs from. So we've been rallying pretty hardcore from uh, May the 3rd, and now we're here at May the 16th, and we're just now getting some pullback, ac pullback action. We actually had that one little pullback day right here, but that was actually just setting up another continuation move higher. All right, and off of this extension move, we 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 uh, you know we broke out, I should say, the uh, and and extended about 100% of that leg up that we had there. You can see the 100% Fibonacci extension right there. So we actually, I would say, extended about 138% of that move. And now you can see that we're having some uh, some pullback action a bit today. So we'll see how it plays out. Now let me take off these channels so I can show you guys something else that's pretty interesting. I hide all the channels here. You guys recall that little head and shoulders pattern that we had that I showed you guys in, uh, I believe, a couple of videos back from the head and shoulders pattern that we had back here in May of May and April of of last year. We had that selling pressure, and we had this little left shoulder, this little right shoulder, and then we had the breakdown. All right now, pay attention to this key trend line that I have from the from the top of the head, which is basically this little pair of line channel from the uh, from the trend line from the shoulders to the head. Now if I move the charts to the right, all right, you can see how that trend line became relevant right here. All right. And then I took this trend line and drew the parallel trend line since it was a relevant trend line to these highs, and then you can see what happened. So, if we were consolidating this nice little range right here, they broke us out, they pulled us back in, they shook us back below that trend line. Then we broke broke out and we pulled back and we held. All right, and again, that's when I was uh, talking about the nice little uh, squeeze or you know the nice little compression pattern we had in the charts off the channels that were going like this, and then off of that key trend line, and then we had the catalyst from the jobs number. Then what do you know? Boom, we broke out. All right, so we're getting a little bit of pullback action here. I'm not sure how much we're going to pull back. Um, I'm pretty sure most partic participants that are in this market that got long that missed entry down here, they're pretty sure they're long from this little area right here, using this 1620 as a stop. All right, so we could see a little pullback if we were to come down a little bit towards this uh, 1631 area on the ES. So that's the level you want to watch, and you want to watch the 1660 level as well. Then you want to watch yesterday's lows, which were uh, yesterday's low, which was uh, 1642 uh, half. 
right now I know a lot of you guys watch the SPY so let's go ahead and take a look at the SPY I just wanted to show you guys some of that uh, update you guys on the little analysis with the channel system and the compression pattern that we had now on the SPY yesterday I talked about watching this key trend line right here for a pullback all right and that trend line come this comes from this little upward channel that we had back last summer of course you break the upper channel you look for that back test and we were grinding up the whole year all right and I don't want to say grinding because we did have some momentum uh, points sometime you know, throughout the year such as uh, you know like right here some momentum some momentum that was going up and uh, we had this accelerate and we had this nice uh, accelerated trend line right here so we pulled back a little bit off that um, off that key trend line if we break today's if we break yesterday's lows around 165 I would expect that we pull back a bit into uh, Tuesday's lower, this little area, area right here, which is the same area that I showed you on the ES, but it's on the SPY, back towards this, uh, the same breakout area which I showed you on the ES, which is back on the SPY, is back towards this 164, 163, 75 level. All right, now let's go ahead and take a look at the volume and the moving averages that came in today. See how they're uh, looking today. One second. Now, the volume today was uh, lower than the previous two days, but we did have some decent volume today, I guess you could say, that came in. Um, we're still above these key short-term moving averages that we've, been that we've been using as a gauge, the 8 EMA, SMA, the 5 EMA, SMA. So continue to use those as a gauge as well. Know that the 5 EMA and SMA is around this 164.78 level, so we'll definitely be watching uh, that level pretty close tomorrow. If we take a look at the triple Qs, the action on the NASDAQ, we've been you know, moving higher as well on the NASDAQ ever since we broke the top of that uh, key little channel, channel trend line that we had right here, All right, which I showed you guys the same channel line on the NASDAQ futures, which for some of you guys that probably missed that video, all right, I'll go ahead and show that channel line again. But we pulled back a bit today. The triple Qs, which is the NASDAQ 100, is still you know, cruising along this 5 EMA and above the 8 EMA, so continue to use that as a gauge as well. And um, that is going to be around 73.35. Today's highs are uh, today's high on the triple Q is uh, 74.10. All right, now let's go back and look at that Nasdaq futures chart there. All right, where we call the breakout above this level right here from the channel. All right, at this um, 20. This, what was this, this 2900 area or so once we started breaking above this level we were saying how the triple Q's could cause the market to get the next momentum leg higher which it has because as you guys hear on CNBC right everybody's talking about they're putting money into the tech sector and they're talking about it this week when we talked about it at wallstreettrading.com three weeks ago alright so you want to make sure you subscribe to these videos and tune into these videos so you guys can get the analysis before the whole media and everybody else starts catching on to what's really going on after the fact but in any case, the triple Qs, the NASDAQ could pull back a bit. We're, again, we're still above these moving averages, so you want to use that as a gauge. If we take a look at the Russell 2000 via the IWM, the uh, Russell 2000 ETF here, you can see that you know the Russell 2000 as well made a lower high from yesterday, and it's pulled back a bit. Um, I would say if we get a break below yesterday's lows, we could maybe try to come back to this 8 um, EMA around 97. We still have the 5 EMA around 97.51, but again, since there is no uh, clear resistance up here, there's really no resistance to watch out for until we make a resistance, and right now, the resistance level that I'm sure most traders are working off of um, is yesterday's high, All right? And as far as support goes, there's really no clear line of support, at least on the daily time frame, because we've just been cruising along higher. There's really no congestion to work off of here, so you, know, you want to use these moving averages as a gauge. All right, so let's go ahead and take a look at the currency action today. We had some wild whipsaw action in the markets today, and some of that had to do with the action we had in the currencies. You can see the uh, dollar futures chart is uh, back tested the break of the little channel line that we had right here, and we came close to that area back here in mid-April. We pulled back, then we held that little back test level, and we rallied all the way back up. And this dollar strength has caused a little bit of uh, pressure in some of the basic material stocks but then again some of the stocks that are in the basic material sector you know they have been rallying with the market that's really more of the uh, weak ones that were not able to rally with the markets with the dollar strength and even then we're seeing the markets rally with the dollar which is a little bit different from uh, what we're used to seeing all right now if we take a look at the euro action the euro had the euro had some nice selling pressure underneath uh, that 130 level we still remain underneath that 130 level and we are looking for a pullback 
uh, back down towards this 128 and back down towards these lows down here around 127 half. Now you can see they sold the market off a bit today, but then they recovered it off the lows. We feel that if we get a break below Thursday's lows, that would be another catalyst for a, a leg down. So keep that euro on watch. The VIX, let's take go ahead and take a look at the volatility index, which was up today. And the VIX has been uh, moving up intraday a little bit when the market was moving up, even though it wasn't able to close on the highs. I have seen points when the market has, you know, for the past couple of days here, the market's been moving up to the top side, and you've been seeing the VIX, uh, you know, make these little higher lows here on the on the chart. So that's a little bit interesting right there. We got to keep that in mind. And if the VIX was to break back over 13.56, we could probably get a nice little spike up towards 14 or 14 and a half. It's all going to depend how uh, much this market pulls back, if it pulls back any off of today's selling action that we had in the last hour, and um, We'll see. Let's take a look at some of these commodities here real quick. Then we'll take a look at some stocks, uh, starting off with uh, crude oil. And I'm going to look at the ETFs today. You guys can go check out the futures if you want. Um, USO held at 33 level. If you guys recall, the head and shoulders pattern that we had on the USO played out with the measured move. They bought it down there at the target, and we're back above the 33 level. The 33 level back test held, and now we're moving back to the top side. So we could think of this as a little move up leg down and probably expect maybe an ABC move up higher we'll see the buyers are going to come in back again here if we get back over this 3450 level in the uh, USO if we take a look at the GLD to take a look at these precious metals which have been showing some weakness of course ever since they rallied up and got rejected at those highs the GLD gap down today and then it rallied right back up and uh, if the GLD was to get some more selling pressure which I think it is um, we can come back down here and check these 130s. I think they will check the 130, and then buyers that want to come in will at least come in down here where they can put a stop versus these lows with less risk than trying to buy it uh, somewhere in this little area right here. All right, uh, I'm not going to look at silver. So I looked at oil, looked at gold. We could take a look at the gold miners today. The gold miners uh, showed a little bit of strength as well, but you know they still made new lows. So they basically gapped down, and they got bought right back up on the gap down. But again, uh, you know. This still had the gold miners. They still have more room to go to the downs, downside on the GDX towards uh, the 21 level there. So let's go ahead and get into some stocks here. Starting off with uh, your guys' favorite, of course, Apple. Apple was up 1.34% uh, today. Held that 420 level that uh, I mentioned in the video two days ago. For the fact it was a key level from this area, from this area, we broke down. They shook in some shorts and they washed, they uh, wiped them right back out. And the 420 level off of a pullback was a decent area to try to get involved at to at least have a, a, a nice little tight stop underneath that level. Underneath that level there. Uh, let's see here. Some of these other tech stocks. Cisco had a great uh, day today. Had a good number for its earnings. Let's see what the numbers. We're right here. The numbers. Let's see real quick. Give me one second. Uh, Cisco. They reported 51 cents uh, earnings per share versus the estimated uh, 44 cents, and that came in pretty good. So that was a nice beat for them. You can see the stock closed yesterday at uh, 21.30 and opened today at 23.50, and gave you some cash flow opportunities on an intraday basis right there as well. As you can see, it traded all the way up to 24.25. So again, there is some money flowing into the tech sector. We had some strength in the uh, data storage stocks like EMC. All right, you can see EMC, this one as well. Nice little move up, little pullback action there. Nice little move up, little pullback action there. This one looks to go higher. And if you're watching EMC, you want to make sure you watch VMW. And VMW, we talked about in the weekend review video this past week because it had this nice little move up, nice little sideways action. It was flagging on the 60-minute chart, which, of course, you kind of you can see on the daily here. And then we're looking for that nice uh, continuation move off this little measured move right here. So keep an eye on BMW and EMC for continuation. Uh, you can also take a look at NTAP. NTAP had a nice little day today as well, up $2.23. They have earnings coming out. Uh, they have earnings coming out on the 21st. Okay, so that looks like it's next week, Tuesday. And they had some nice buying pressure come in today. And let's see what STX did. STX did nothing. That's another data storage stock. And then you have WDC. And that did nothing today. Then if I'm not mistaken, if I'm not mistaken here, you got S and DK, which made new highs and then reversed. Right, so that's how some of the stocks in the tech sector are looking. Amazon, we can look at Amazon real quick. 
Amazon above the 50% trend line of our main channel here and it's pulling back a bit you know we're going to gauge it to see how it comes uh, and how it reacts around down towards this uh, how it comes down and reacts bit down here towards the 260 level uh, what else we want to talk about here HPQ another strong stock that's uh, well not as uh, it's been strong for the year but another decent stock that's trying to pick up some momentum here again was up today uh, a little over one and a half percent they have earnings coming out next week uh, this one has a nice little trigger if it breaks out over 2175 or so all right uh, the financials let's go ahead and talk about the financials the financials they pulled back today you're seeing a lot of topping tail reversals in some of the main banks like Goldman Sachs Goldman Sachs rallied up broke over uh, previous days highs and reversed right back down and closed near the lows that's pretty nasty right there um, this was a trade that we called out back down here towards the back test of the broken trend line all right, the little wedge pattern, that boom, explosion, crazy. Uh, what else there? Citigroup. Citigroup had another. Citigroup actually held up pretty well today. Inside day in Citigroup. Uh, J.P. Morgan had a topping tail reversal as well. Made new highs for the year, broke yesterday's highs, and then pulled back and closed near the lows. All right, this one still looks pretty decent though. Uh, may pull back in a bit, but still looks pretty good. And let's take a look at uh, Bank of America (BAC). Uh, BAC just look, looks like it had a pause day today, so. Aside from that, don't want to keep on talking here. Hope you guys had a great day. It was a very interesting day. We'll see if we get some follow-through sell-side action tomorrow. Remember, tomorrow's options expiration, so it could be a, a wild day again. So uh, make sure you manage your risk accordingly. And aside from that, have a great night, folks. Cheers.